Three years ago, I created this technological marvel, a spaceship builder game which I coined Pyrospace. In this absolute piece of art, you can build your own specialized war machine to face off against AI preset spaceships. This game featured killer drones that definitely aren't a ripoff from carriers in StarCraft 2, balanced turrets that don't deal an excessive amount of damage, a very very limited amount of economy, and completely realistic and accurate spaceship physics. You could build housing for your own human pets and on top of that you could even walk inside your spaceship as it rained glorious hellfire onto the AI while being followed by a metallic green dog. The game even featured a full save system that I have no idea how it got working but looking back at the game it was truly a masterpiece. Okay, I may have exaggerated a bit. If you've been paying attention, the performance of this game is embarrassingly bad and things like this can happen if you aren't careful. What's worse is that it's been 3 years and this game is still the most advanced game that I've ever created. It's sad because you would expect 3 years of on and off programming and game development to produce something better. I guess I'm just not good enough, I've wasted all my time. My attention span has been fried from these years of procrastination and excuses. So, today we will be remaking Pyrospace from scratch with all the knowledge that I've acquired in these past 3 years. Before we get into the video, I'd like to apologize for the lateness of this video. I had other obligations in the middle of creating this video and also procrastinated the creation of this video afterwards. I'd also like to add that the game you see on screen right now is like most of my games a very early prototype. So don't complain if the previous version of the game looks better. I definitely do think this version is a lot more visually cohesive though. Pyrospace was originally made in Unity and I no longer have the code for the game. But that doesn't matter, I probably wouldn't have found much use in the messy code that I used to write anyway. This time we are going to write the game in my favorite game engine Bevy and my newly found favorite programming language Rust. One change that I'm going to make this time is switching from 3D to 2D graphics. While this is partially to improve performance, Pyrospace was at its core technically a 2D game so we don't really lose anything on the gameplay side of things. Now you might be asking me, what will happen on the aesthetic side of things? Well I'm not the greatest at making optimized, clean, or even good looking 3D models so it's probably best that we stick with the 2D art style anyway. I'm more familiar with 2D and I think it would also make the game slightly more unique because most spaceship builder games out there are made in a semi-realistic 3D style. This is a square, but it's not just any square. From this square we can begin to build the foundation of our spaceship. When we select a grid, we can choose to append another grid to the side of it using the WASD keys. The code for each grid is actually quite simple, and at its core consists of three main parameters. The first parameter is an array containing four tuples representing the wall of one side of the grid, and the grid being attached to that side. These are stored with entity ID so that they can be easily accessible within our systems. When a grid is attached to a side of a grid, any adjacent walls will be deleted to give the illusion that the spaceship is hollow. The second parameter is the position of the grid relative to the first grid placed on a grid-like structure. This would be how the second parameter could be represented. Then we have a simple size variable which for now is the same across every grid because I haven't implemented variable sizes yet. Notice how our spaceship is looking a little blocky. This is fine for functionality, but it's a bit unrealistic. Additionally, our spaceship has no floors, so if we have diagonally adjacent grids like this, our mind can't really comprehend visually what is going on. So let's make some visual improvements to the game. For our first improvement, to fix the blockiness of our spaceship, I simply added a function to check if two adjacent sides are empty and made those sides invisible in favor of a diagonal. This worked quite well and although my code doesn't look as clean as before, it certainly made our spaceship look much more sleek and robust. Next, I made floors for our spaceship. I had originally thought about using polygons to make the floor, but I instead went the easy route and made a 512 by 512 diagonal sprite and used the sprite component in Bevy to flip it accordingly to fit onto our grid. If the grid is not triangular, the floor is just represented by a scaled up pixel sprite. Along with K 
camera controls, I added a little bloom to the game for visual enhancements and also created a field of stars to replace our background before we started working on ship controls so we could actually tell when our ship moved around. The star background might look static and limiting for our map size, but if we scroll our camera around, you might notice that it is actually an infinite star grid that follows our camera around. As long as we don't zoom too far out, it will seem completely normal and immersive due to the seamless tiling that I implemented for the star grid. Now for our actual game controls. I wanted our spaceship to have semi-realistic controls, but also controls that weren't too gamey like the original version of the game was. To achieve this, I made the spaceship rotate with the A and D keys and move forward with the W key. Our rotation uses constant speeds while translation wise we apply a force forward when we press W and a resistance force pushing backwards, sort of like friction but in space. This specific control scheme allows us to achieve something more akin to actual physics while still retaining relative control over the ship. But there's a bit of a problem here. You might notice that even when we increase the size of our ship, it still moves and rotates at the same speed. This is neither realistic nor is it actually a fun mechanic to have. For a game to be immersive, gameplay should be somewhat believable or logical in the context of the game. Furthermore, this sort of control scheme infringes on my previous quote where I said these controls needed to be more realistic. So let me introduce engines. The more engines that we add to a ship, the faster it moves and rotates relative to its mass. Of course, the more mass there is on a ship, the slower it is initially going to rotate and move without any engines. I believe that our current system does fulfill our requirements of partial realisticity while also maintaining a gamey and arcadey feel. Now the basic construction system is nearly complete with the exception of the main highlight of our previous game, fast shooting laser turrets. So it's time to begin adding some turrets. I decided to go with a minimalistic triangle as a basic turret to keep in line with the style of our game and I was actually pretty satisfied that it looked pretty in place even though I was pretty lazy in designing the turret. I added a projectile system which at the moment just moves projectiles in the same direction at a constant speed while despawning them after a set amount of time. And with that, we're on to our final step for this video. It's time to actually add some enemy spaceships that we can kill. As this is just a prototype, I'll just use text in the form of a string to store the structural data of a ship. Although this probably wouldn't slide for the final version of the game, I'm doing this right now just to see if the core gameplay holds up. I'll use the plus character to represent the grid, the exclamation mark character to represent a grid with a turret on it, and this up arrow character to represent an engine. Now we were able to add any preset ship into the game easily, but there's still a problem. Even though we can add any ship into the game, we need to figure out a way to make them actually move and act sentient. To create a simple but also playable AI, I initially set each of the ships on a random directional course and made them stop whenever they came in range of a player. At this point, they would just shoot at the player until they die or the player goes out of range. If we zoom out, you might notice that the ships sometimes disappear and reappear once they move too far away from the player. This is done so that we can maintain an illusion of infinite space while the ships are really just being transported outside of the vision range of the player. Now these are just the very core mechanics of the game. If I were to fully expand on this game, it would include more immersive gameplay mechanics than this version where we just simplistically run around and shoot their ships. If you watched all the way to the end of the video and enjoyed this kind of content, drop a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it.